In past episodes, I've talked about two separate ideas that make sense on their own. On the one hand, we've got the possibility that we live in an infinite, expanding universe. Head off in any one direction and you'll just keep on going forever and ever, and you'll see more stars and planets and galaxies, chaos space, outer rims, gamma quadrants, uncharted territories. And if you keep going long enough, you might even encounter mere versions of yourself and your entire crew, an infinite number of them. Ok, well that's fine. I mean, it's, it's not fine. The human brain isn't great at comprehending infinity. But on the other hand, we've got the overwhelming evidence that we live in an expanding, even accelerating universe. Turn the clock backwards and all the galaxies come together. The universe becomes hotter and denser until just a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. And the entire universe was so small it was tinier than an atom. Astronomers call this the singularity. But wait a second. Isn't this a contradiction? How can you have a universe which is infinite in size, but which used to be so small that it doesn't even have a size? In times like this, I need to bring in a bigger brain, someone who has dedicated their life to studying the cosmos. It's time for astrophysicist Dr. Paul Matt Sutter. He's here to patiently help me understand this conundrum. Welcome back to the Guide to Space. Hey, Fraser, thanks for having me back. All right, so this is a conundrum. I've had this question come from a bunch of people a bunch of times. This idea that on the one hand, we think the universe is infinite, and then on the other hand, we talk about how the universe once a long time ago was a singularity. So, mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. we put these ideas together, can we start with the first one, which is what do we mean when we say that the universe is infinite? Yeah, we actually don't know the true extent of the universe. All we know is that it is very, 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 very large. Larger than the observable bubble, than our observable patch. It is at least a hundred times larger. It could be infinite, but we actually don't know. But either way, even if it's not infinite right now, uh, since the universe is expanding, given an infinite amount of time, the universe will be infinitely big, even if it's not infinitely big right now. But it could be infinite right now. Yes, it could be. OK. All right. OK, so that's, so that's sort of what it means. And, and we've done episodes about this, about what it means, what some of the implications are if the universe is infinite. Mm -hmm. So then let's talk about the other side of this equation, which is like, what does it mean that the universe was once a singularity back? Way back right in the, the day. Beginning. Back in the day. Yeah. So check yeah. this out. There is no such thing as the singularity. No How such about thing that? as How about singularity. That? Yeah. Okay, well then, so we shouldn't even be using this term. We, we actually shouldn't because uh, the singularity, this concept of a point of infinite density, this is an artifact of the mathematics that we use to describe the universe, in this case, general relativity. And the presence of that artifact, the presence of that infinity, tells us that our math is going wrong. It tells us it's a sign that our mathematics are inadequate to describe the physics of the universe at the earliest times. Oh, just like our mathematics are incapable of helping us understand what's going on within the event horizon of a black hole, back at the beginning of the universe, that's the place where the math gets away from us. Exactly. So just like the singularity of a black hole, we don't know what's really going on in the center of a black hole. We don't know what's going on in the very, very extremely early universe. The whole Big Bang Theory, this is our story of the history of the universe going back to very early, going back to very early times. But when general relativity says, oh yeah, if you extrapolate far enough, go back enough far in time, there's a singularity, a point of infinite density, that's general relativity telling you, hey, I can't go any further. You need some other physical theory to, if you want to go further back. So then when we do take those ideas and bring them together, what does it mean to have a universe that is hot and dense and infinitely small or beyond our comprehension and yet also still be infinite in, in size? 
Right, so it, this is a matter of densities. So, you know, singularities, uh, these points of breakdown, aren't measured in terms of physical extent, they're measured in terms of densities. So if I have two galaxies that are a million light years apart right now, and I run the clock backwards, even if the entire universe is infinite, those galaxies will be closer together in the past. And then I run the clock even further back and further back, they'll be closer and closer, they'll have merged together, they'll be one thing, they'll be one small, very small compressed thing. The densities rise higher and higher, no matter the uh, true spatial extent of the entire universe. So just to kind of put it all together, there could be a time shortly after the Big Bang where the universe was incredibly dense, hot, dense, and yet that level of density could go on for infinity. And then over time, the universe could expand thanks to the Big Bang and the expansion that's happened since then. It would still be infinite, but now it would be less dense in its infinity. But yet it would still in both cases just go on forever. Exactly, because the expansion of the universe is a metric expansion. It's expansion of space-time. It's an expansion of coordinates between two points. That is the entire definition of an expanding universe. That is our entire conception of the Big Bang model. It doesn't matter the total volume, the total extent. All you care about is the relative distance between any two points. Mind blown. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much. A big thanks to Dr. Paul Matt Sutter for helping me wrap my brain around this apparent paradox. It really helped, I think. Are there any more mind benders you want me to look into? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. In our next episode, we look into terraforming again, but this time, instead of changing other worlds, how can we adapt ourselves to be better suited for other planets? How can we terraform ourselves? Now, normally, I suggest you watch another video, but this time, I think you should go check out Dr. Paul Matt Sutter's channel. He's always answering complicated questions like this on his Ask a Space Man channel. Check it out here and subscribe. In times like this, I need to bring. Mm. <laughs>